in order to be able to visualize a possible subwave structure of continuous time and space and that of simultaneous space-time, you would like to see the interactions between subwave spectra in linear and nonlinear media, or technically in additive and heterodyne synthesis. Now, the conscious motivation and competence to move creatively within these planes of expression through the medium and the very instrument of internal coherence and to ever increase this coherence, to increase the scale and complexity of this expression. This is called life. If we not only visualize the different subway spectra of creation, but actually want to see the single physical structure which permits waves in different media to come to an agreement, then we may begin to see the basic principle of what life really is. Now, this is the binary Fibonacci or Banacci fractal uh, interactively as part of the subwave explorer program. So the space outside the fractal we can think of as normal continuous time and space with normal laws of physics. So waves here compete for energy by adding up their amplitudes and spectra created here are created in additive synthesis. The medium inside the center of the fractal we could think of as simultaneous time and space. And the physics here is based on heterodyne synthesis or nonlinear interaction. Now it's important to understand that in subwave physics the concept of a medium as we normally know it in physics does not exist in the sense that it is not fundamental. Instead, the medium is created as a result of coherence among subwaves. In other words, coherence itself is the creative factor. In philosophy, the substratum is referred to as bhavashta, or the abstract. As the substratum is dimensionless, the only thing which can exist there is pure ratio. The activation of this ratio, creating different dimensional media, is referred to as swabhav. And the process of swabhav, creating physical media out of the abstract, is called bifurcation. First, we switch the Banacci fractal to line mode. Then, if we apply ratio step by step, starting from zero, more and more subwave frequencies will be generated within the medium of continuous time and space. First two, then four, eight, sixteen, and so on. Here we see the bifurcation. If we switch to combined viewing mode, then we see that the internal structure of the Banacci fractal also shows a bifurcation pattern. Or more precisely, a bifurcated iterative function system, or IFS. Here, for example, the initial branching step shows a spreading ratio left to right of 1 by 1.5. Then the same pattern is repeated over and over again. Now, obviously, as the bifurcation goes on and on, the total picture becomes more and more chaotic. This is the case for almost all iteration ratios. However, there exists a small set of ratios where the fractal becomes perfectly orderly and harmonic. This is internal coherence. Probably the most well-known iteration ratio optimizing coherence in a fractal subwave spectrum is the golden ratio, also known as the number phi. The portion of the substratum activated by this type of subwave spectrum functions as an attractor or a cosmic nucleus, physically, biologically and psychologically. If we switch the Banacci fractal to the annotated mode, we can see the golden ratio directly lay it around the center, here or here. So this is a subwave spectrum in nonlinear or heterodyne synthesis. At the same time, at the outer rims, we see golden ratio optimizing a fractal subwave spectrum in continuous time and space. And this may indicate why fractality is such a universal principle in natural creation. In terms of a physical structure permitting waves moving through different media to come to an agreement, we can see that in this case the Binacci fractal is internally completely based on Fibonacci numbers. And this of course is a pattern we see everywhere in nature. Now while staying in the annotated mode, 
we slowly increase the iteration ratio until the next point where the fractal becomes coherent. While going there we see that the subwave spectrum at the top rim typically stays chaotic all the time. In other words, no consistent physical medium is formed. When the iteration ratio is 2, this creates a spectrum of a regular and exactly periodic subwave structure. This forms the medium in which energy waves can exist. In other words, continuous time and space. The different forms of internal coherence or synchronization of the substratum are all states of perfect equilibrium. It only shows the prerequisite for wave creation in a consistent medium and is therefore still somewhat theoretical. Actual wave creation results from subtle fluctuations at the edge of equilibrium, or one could also say at the silver lining between matter and abstract. These fluctuations, however, are not random but completely systematic and automatically include the pure principle of biological perception without introducing duality. These infinitesimal desynchronizations of the substratum were identified by the Indian preceptor Sri Piya Sakhar as microvita. Together with the energy fluctuations caused by microvita in the subwave structure of the abstract, this is a purely causal approach to wave creation, referred to by Sakhar as the original inferences. <laughs>